Okay, wow, all right. Hi everybody, I'm Tammy. Today I'm going to show you how to make these chocolate chip raisin oatmeal cookies. So they're really delicious. I've been making them for a while and we posted the, a recipe for hot chocolate yesterday or the day before and people were very excited about the hot chocolate but the cookies were also in the picture and they were as equally as excited about the cookies. So I didn't want you to have to wait for the recipe because the holidays are upon us. And so we decided we would just do a quick impromptu little video to show you how to make them. And so I got them typed up today and uh, the recipe is on the blog and Tom can post a link to that. So they're really easy to make. The recipe makes one dozen. And if you want, when you go to the blog to get the recipe, you can double or triple the recipe if you wanna make a larger quantity. So we're gonna get started and I'll just talk about the ingredients as we go. So um, the blog, if you're new to us, uh, I'm Tammy, the creator of the blog and this YouTube channel called Nutmeg Notebook and we share all about our whole food plant-based lifestyle. So these cookies are vegan, they are oil-free, they can be gluten-free and they're absolutely delicious. They also have no refined sugar. So first we're gonna start with two very ripe bananas and we want them to be very ripe because we're not using sugar and this is where the sweetness is going to come from. So I like them to get very spotty, very dark because that's when all the natural sugars are really coming out and really make them sweet. So it's nice when you are cooking, if you move your trash can close to you, because that saves, like mine goes under the sink. Well, I would waste a lot of time and steps running over to the sink to throw everything in the trash. So either have a little container on the counter with you or a trash bucket close by. So we're going to mash these and I like to just use a, a potato masher and Tom I don't know if you want to do the B camera the overhead camera sure. for this so they can see what I'm doing and we'll just mash these my husband Tom is um, my one of my moderators and then we also have some moderators and who's with us today Randy, Tom? Randy is here she's flying solo right All now. All right thank you for being here and helping us Randy. It was really last minute you guys. I was just, Tom was like seriously you want to go on and do cookies right now? I was like yeah let's just do it. It would be fun. So I'm just using my potato masher and we're just mashing these. Now you can use frozen bananas if you let them get really ripe and then you freeze them. And what I do then is I just thaw them out in the microwave, um, unless you think about it in advance and have time to let them sit out on the counter. You can do that as well. So I'm just gonna scrape off the banana off of here. You're back on a camera. Okay, thanks. And I just, I really like how a potato masher works, but you can also use a fork. Now, if you do use frozen bananas, just know that they can be more watery and you may have to use more oats then, but you know, that's no big deal to do that. Now we also are gonna use a little bit of applesauce. This also adds sweetness. And because these are no sugar added, we want to get the no sugar added applesauce and you can get this everywhere. I buy the little case of it at Costco, but you know, every grocery store has it and certainly Trader Joe's. Now I'm gonna use this little tool called a jar key and it just makes getting the lids off. Like this is, as you can see, this lid is on really, really tight. And so you just use this and it pops the seal. Did you hear that? And then the lid comes off so easy. This is such a lifesaver. So I'm going to use, that was two ripe bananas, and I'm going to use half a cup of unsweetened applesauce. And of course you can always make your own applesauce too. It's really easy to make just in the Vitamix. And sometimes I make, sometimes I'll make a raw applesauce so you don't even have to cook it. You just make it 
completely in the Vitamix. And I leave the skin on it even. It just, it's super easy. Okay, so we're gonna do half a cup of this. I have my measuring cup here. And if you're interested in any of the tools that you see me using, those they all can be found on our Amazon affiliate page. And we will link to that in the show notes. And as well as on the, um, you can see them on, on the blog, we have a link. So here's another tip for you. When you're baking or cooking, put all the ingredients together that you're going to need and after you use them, set them in a different spot. That way, if you get a phone call or your kids or your grandkids interrupt you while you're trying to make something, you and you come back and you think, oh, did I add the cinnamon? Did I add the applesauce? And you don't know for sure, right? That has, that hap has happened to me in the past so many times. So that, this is just a good cooking tip just to help you uh, have a foolproof recipe. Okay, so now we've got that half a cup of applesauce and I'm just gonna stir it in. And then I like to add my seasonings to this because I just feel like I can get them really well incorporated in with the uh, wet ingredients. So we're going to need some cinnamon. This is my favorite cinnamon, and this is from Local Spicery, and this is the Saigon Cassia Cinnamon, and it tastes so sweet, you would think that it has sugar in it, but it does not. It is lovely. So you can go to localspicery.com, and this it's a company in California. I do not have an affiliate relationship with them. I just happen to love their products. Okay, so there it is. Uh, I'm gonna use a tablespoon of that in case anybody's writing it down. But like I said, the recipe is on the blog. And Tom, are you going to um, link to the blog post? Um, yeah, it, well, I said the, the, the blog is already linked in, sh in show notes, but I'm gonna update it okay. to this specific post, but it'll be the very first post if they click on the link that's there, which I will be updating. Shortly. Okay, great. And then I like a little bit of nutmeg and Obviously, I like nutmeg, right? Nutmeg notebook. And so I have a little grinder. It's my little microplane grinder. And I have a whole nutmeg in here. I'll just show you. That's what it looks like. And I just like to grind my own because the flavor is amazing. So I'll link to this as well. It's on our Amazon page, although they've changed it. It has a stainless steel top on it now instead. And we just need a little quarter of a, of a teaspoon. And I'm just gonna get my quarter teaspoon here and we'll measure that out. Oh my gosh, you guys, if only you could smell this. It is amazing, amazing. Okay, so that is our nutmeg. And then we also want a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. And I use vanilla powder, but you could use vanilla extract as well. That would be perfectly fine. And you know, the vanilla just adds a little bit of sweetness to it too, which is really nice. Because we're not adding any sugar, we want to do everything we can to make these taste sweet. And then- Mary Jo wants to know where you buy your nutmeg. So I get that from Amazon and um, we'll link to that. Um, or if you just go to our Amazon page, it will be on there. We in have the pantry items. in the pantry items, we have all the food um, listed. And so you can buy a jar of it and you can probably get it at a regular grocery store too. I know our Sprouts also carries it. So this is cardamom and ground cardamom. I know some people don't like cardamom. If you don't like it, it's okay, leave it out. They'll still be really delicious. And so I am going to use half a teaspoon of the cardamom. And we just want it to be kind of level. So we've got that in there. Oh, I really like cardamom, you guys. It smells so good. Okay, and then I'm just going to stir those in. And I do like the silicone spatulas for all of my cooking. They just work so well. And because they don't have a wood handle 
and they're all one piece. You don't have to worry about bacteria growing where it connects or not being able to put the wood handle in the um, soapy water in the sink. So, so you'd see, you can see that this is all well incorporated. Like I said, this is a super easy recipe. Okay, so we've got that. Now, the next thing that I add is a little bit of oat bran. So I had this oat bran hanging out in my pantry and I thought, what am I gonna use it for? And so one day when I was experimenting with trying to make cookies, I used it and it just added such a wonderful texture as well as it seemed to make them taste sweeter to me. And so, it, I, you can buy this at the grocery store. I'm pretty sure that I got this at Whole Foods. But if you don't have oat bran, you could just take some rolled oats and put that in your food processor or in your high powered blender and turn it into flour and use half a cup of that. Or you can use quinoa flakes. And I just buy these from Amazon. These are also on our Amazon pantry um, page. And that would work. Or if you have millet, you could also use um, some ground millet. That would also work. So um, I'm just going to get a half a cup of this. Yes, Tom. Before you proceed, back to the spices, what was the brand of vanilla powder? Oh, I don't know if this is still available on Amazon or not. It's Slow Food Group. Your is, focus is where your face is. That oh, color. back here? Yeah. Just keep it here. Yeah. Slow Food Group is uh, what this one is called. So you'll just have to look on Amazon and see what is available. So, um, you know, there was a problem with um, the vanilla bean crops and that's why the price got so shot up. And um, so sometimes the brand that I use is out um, by the time I've posted about it and people go to Amazon and try to get the same brand. So just look for one. We try to find ones that are organic. This one happened to not be organic. So, um, but you can look on our Amazon page. We have more than one posted on there. And I'm going to use that same half cup measure and we're going to measure out half a cup of the oat grow of the um, oat bran and like I said you can use the other substitutes that I told you about um, if you don't have any oat bran and this recipe is very forgiving so um, you know try using the products that you have on hand okay so we've got that and then I have two and a half cups of rolled oats and I'm going to put those in and if I need more because you know sometimes the bananas are a little bit different size they might be a little bit bigger and so it'll make the batter a little bit more wet and so I might need to add more oats and so if I do Tom I'll have you get me some more oats and then I'm going to add some raisins now I do usually like the golden raisins, but today I am using the darker raisins because I also have the chocolate chips and it just makes me, when I look at the cookies, it just makes me think that they have more chocolate chips in them. I know it's silly, but um, that's how my brain works. So I'm just looking for my quarter cup here and these are just organic raisins that I get from Whole Foods. This is the Whole Foods brand. And look, there's a little bit of the grape stem in here. So we want to put that in the trash. Don't need that. And of course, if you want to use more raisins, you can if you need it to be sweeter. Because here's the deal, you guys. We're all at different places in our personal preferences for taste and sweet. And so just adjust things accordingly to please you. So if you need more raisins, use more. If you don't like raisins, don't use them. You could certainly substitute and use a little bit of date paste instead if you wanted to. Um, it would just, I would start with like a quarter of a cup 
and then taste it and see if it's sweet enough for you. And if not, then just add more. And I have a recipe um, on how to make date paste and I also have a video on how to make date paste. And then of course, these wouldn't be chocolate chip if we didn't add some chocolate chips. So I have two kinds of chocolate chips that are unsweetened. And so this one is from Trader Joe's. This is a fairly new product that they have. And these are just cacao and they are little chips. So they have um, in a tablespoon, it's 120 calories and eight grams of fat. And that is just the chocolate. So the ingredients are organic, unsweetened chocolate. That's it. And so that's at Trader Joe's. And do they taste bitter? Yeah, they taste a just a little bit bitter. And that depends also on, um, you know, your personal taste preferences. So I don't eat sugary stuff. I don't eat anything with refined sugar in it. And so I actually like the taste of these, but um, kids probably won't. Yeah, Tom, you got a question? Yeah, is this recipe, uh, this is from, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, Trace Arise. Is this similar to your quinoa banana oat muffin recipe? Um, well, um, somewhat, I guess, somewhat it is, yeah. I mean, they're all basically the same because they all are all made with bananas and oats and applesauce. And, you know, when we're cooking without sugar, that's just a combination that we use a lot for desserts. So here are the Santa Barbara Chocolate Company unsweetened chocolate chips. And you can see that they look very similar to the Trader Joe's ones. The Trader Joe's ones are just slightly smaller, but these are also unsweetened. But you do have to buy this big bag from them. Um, this is a three pound bag, and I just order them directly from the company. And I learned about them from Brittany from the Giruti family, who has a wonderful blog and YouTube channel where she cooks whole food plant-based. And so I saw her using these in recipes um, months ago, so I bought them. And I use these also in my chocolate cherry brownie recipe, and these are wonderful. So if you're, um, like kids don't usually like these because they're just not uh, sweet enough. So um, like our, our grandkids don't care for them. You have another question? Yeah, JL's asking if um, chocolate chips were a trigger for her, um, just drop them or do you have a substitute suggestion? Yeah, I would just, I would leave them out. If chocolate chips, um, you know, you, if, can you have cacao nibs? at all or are those a trigger i mean certainly if if cookies or anything in it in the recipe is a trigger for you then don't make them don't make them um, but here's the thing if it comes between eating a high fat high sugar high calorie density um, non-vegan treat or even a vegan treat that's really fattening at christmas time or having these i would rather that you have these because these aren't terrible for you, rather than going for um, something that is going to be a huge trigger for you and maybe cause a binge. So, um, so I have a quarter cup of these. So you could make these and just have them be raisins. Or some people have um, know that using dried fruit is a trigger for them. And so, you know, maybe they don't want to use the dried fruit. And it just all depends. We all have to know um, our own limits and what we can and cannot have. Okay, so now I just want to stir these up and see what the texture is like. Any more questions, Tom? Uh, there was a question earlier here. Let me, let me scroll up. So when you first start mixing them up, maybe you want to do the overhead the B camera. Um, when you first start mixing them up, it appears like it's going to be really dry, but just like when you're mixing up regular cookie dough, keep going because, um, you know, it, it just takes a little bit to incorporate all the wet ingredients. And then it's going to be pretty similar in texture to cookie dough, but we don't have any 
refined flour in it. We don't have any refined sugar. There's no eggs, no dairy. And now you can see it's starting to stick together like cookie dough. So I don't think I need to add any more oats to it. And sometimes I do, especially if I'm using that frozen banana that I've thought out, then I might. But that looks pretty good to me. So you can see how that looks. Yeah, we're still, we're still in the big cam. Okay. Yeah. I got to get used to having the different camera views, you guys. I'm not used mm -hmm. to that yet. Okay, but well, do you I, like I have a question picture? for you. I'm on camera now. Okay, um, Tom's and, on camera. And yes, camera. I'm, 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 I'm hand-holding the Tom cam now because we set up so fast I didn't grab the tripod for my little thing here. So um, earlier, just while you're kind of mixing here, Mary, Mary and Claire were asking if we have a list of must-have spices from local spice trees. So maybe we should talk about the videos we did with Nick earlier would be good. I'm coming back to you. Okay, so I don't have a list. Um, and here's the thing, it all depends on how you cook and what whatever spices you normally cook. So if you cook a lot of Indian food and um, use a lot of uh, those type of spices, um, then those would be what you'd want to buy because all of their spices are like premium. They're all amazing. They, um, they mill them in small batches uh, right in their store and so everything is extremely fresh. So I do love the, um, the cinnamon, the gingerbread spice, the pumpkin spice, the apple pie spice, um, all of the, you know, whatever you would use for baking. Those are amazing. Um, and uh, I guess we just, we need to do maybe a video all about okay. those. Well, I've, in the short term though, she could go back and watch the spicery Yeah, so we videos. have, a, we have local spicery videos that you can watch. So just, if you just do a search on YouTube, local spicery, you'll find the videos that we did. And uh, we actually visited the store and interviewed um, Nick. And so those would be very really in good. Depth. Yeah, in-depth and very good videos to watch. Okay, and one more for you. Um, okay. Mary and Claire's coming back on the uh, chocolate chip question. Not necessarily the trigger, but I'm not adding fat. So cocoa powder and have uh, chocolate oatmeal raisin cookies. So I'm, I'm missing something there. But uh, is there fat in the stuff you're using? Because you're not adding sugar. No, there's fat in, in the natural yes, chocolate. Okay. The natural, natural chocolate does have fat. And so this does have, in a tablespoon, there is eight grams of fat. And I'm using four tablespoons. Um, and so um, you're gonna have 32 grams of fat divided by 12. Whatever that comes out to, that's how much fat would be in the cookies, plus the amount of fat that is just naturally found in the oats. If you're, if you're concerned about that. So remember, this is a treat. This isn't something that I think that you should eat daily. This is a special treat uh, for the holidays. So now I like to use this scoop and we do have um, the scoop on our Amazon page. And I think it's around a quarter of a cup or so. And I like to use it because it helps me get my cookies even. So I've just taken a baking sheet and I've lined it with parchment paper, but if you have a Silpat mat that fits, use that. I just don't have one yet for this small um, baking sheet. So I like to make sure that I have the dough pretty packed into there. And also remember that, you know, this isn't necessarily a weight loss recipe either and I'm not in weight loss mode and so I can have some of these treats and so it just depends on where you're at in your journey. You're in weight balance mode. I'm in weight balance yeah I'm just you know maintaining um, an almost 50 pound weight loss and I have been for almost six years now and uh, that's because I don't eat this stuff all the time. These are actually just special treats. And so then you'll wanna preheat your oven to 350 degrees. 
and then you're going to bake these for about 25 to 30 minutes and just now in my oven it's just 25 minutes i make them in the breville which you can see back here behind me and that is a breville um a toaster oven that's also an air fryer but i just use the bake function so tom you have another question yeah jl's commenting that if she buys the the chocolate chips then she eats them all uh, the bags of almonds almonds from Costco we've talked about this recently uh, falls in the same category for me so our solution to that is we don't buy them so so that probably answers the chocolate chip question <laughs> or, or for me the almond question so yeah, yeah just, so just drop the chocolate chips and add a few more raisins yeah so if the if the if you don't want chocolate chips in them that's okay and you could use raisins apricots um, I recently in our nourish box that we subscribed to um, we got some unsweetened dried cranberries you could add those you could probably add fresh cranberries um, I would you know slightly chop them up first in a food processor um, it just depends on where you're at in your journey and what works for you and what isn't a trigger for you so you know like <laughs> Tom can eat one of these and just like be satisfied or maybe two and be satisfied and it's not a trigger for him and um, and I can have them too so um, but it just depends on where you're at another question Tom uh, Vicki is asking what has Tammy added now that she is in weight maintenance mode I love the candles behind you oh okay well thank you I got candles behind me <laughs> um, well, our, the diet we eat, yeah, what, have, what did you add back in? It's been a long time ago since we went from weight loss into maintenance mode, so. Yeah, so. Coming back to you on camera A. Okay, so I eat, basically I eat the same way now that I did for weight loss, except that occasionally I will have something that is more of a treat, like, like these cookies. And, you know, these cookies are um, going to be higher calorie density for me than my quinoa banana oat muffins, which are a similar recipe. But these have the chocolate chips and they have the raisins in them. And both of those are higher calorie density. And so if I would have been eating those foods when I was trying to lose weight, weight, they probably would have derailed my weight loss and they may have caused me to have cravings back then because I was still neuro adapting to a healthier lifestyle. So, um, but here's the thing, as you're losing weight, the less you weigh, the less calories you need to sustain yourself. And so, um, as I got smaller, you know, the less calories my body needed. And so you have to take that into account. So. I didn't add in a bunch of food when I um, got to maintenance. I pretty much just kept eating the same way. But in the last few years, I have realized that I could um, add in a few treats. And so I can have a little bit of these cookies. And look, you guys, I packed those so tight that I'm only going to get 11 cookies instead of 12 and I made a batch earlier today and I got 12 out of them okay so now I'm gonna move these around and so everybody's different um, it also depends on how much you exercise and so when we're doing a lot of hiking I can have you know I can seem to eat more food because I'm getting that long um, extended exercise and burn, you know, I burn a lot of calories when we go hiking. And so um, it just depends on how active you are. I'm gonna steal a few of the chocolate chips out of that one because this one somehow got just loaded. So I'm gonna move them over here. Now here's what I do is I take my spatula and I don't know if you maybe wanna do the, um, you have the B camera going, Tom? Yep. And I just, I like to flatten these a little bit. Now remember, they're not going to raise because there's no baking powder in these. Baking powder actually does have quite a bit of sodium in it. 
And so I'm just patting these out, but I want to keep that nice round shape, but I just don't want them so thick. And so I'm just going to pat them down and make them look really pretty. And we want them all to be, you're making a lot of noise, Tom. What are you doing? Um, and we want to... Uh, causing trouble. You are causing trouble. And we just want to keep them even in, in size so that they'll bake at the same time. They'll all get done at the same time. And I just kind of like to just make the edges look good. Um, I just like my food to be pretty. I don't want to eat ugly food. How about you guys? So this is what I do. I just pat them and keep doing that so that they look really nice when they bake because they are going to bake up whatever shape you leave them in when they go in the oven. Now, I don't, I don't need to show you how to do all of these. I'll just finish this last one. Do you ever, and then... I got a question for you from... Sure. Uh, from, well, from Jordan here. It looks like, how do we make cookies more crispy uh, if you're not a fan of, uh, of chewier version? Yeah, you really can't without fat. It, it's just, it just doesn't work. Um, you know, in order to get those really crispy kind of cookies. I think the Esselstons have a recipe for a biscotti and so those are twice baked and so that would give you um, kind of the crispy crunch maybe that you're looking for. I can't remember what all is in their biscotti recipe but it's in their how to prevent and reverse heart disease cookbook and, um, and I've never made them but they do look delicious. So then after you go ahead and flatten all of these and then just put them in the oven, the preheated 350 degree oven. Now these today I baked for 25 minutes and I kind of, I like to make sure that there's some chocolate chips on the top of each of them. It's just visually very appealing when I go to eat them. So as I'm patting them out and um, making them all a pretty shape, then I just make sure there's a chocolate chip on top. And if there isn't, if I can't sneak one out of the dough, then I'll just grab a couple out of the bag and put them on top. And we love these. We love them with the hot chocolate. So we also have a sugar-free hot chocolate recipe that we just posted. So it's on the blog, also on the YouTube channel. And so, and that was the last one that we I'll did. I'll put a link in the show notes. It's not there yet, but. Okay, great. And so, um, but you know, you really have to have some kind of fat in the cookies that are gonna spread out and become really crisp. And so um, I haven't been able to do that. Another question. Yeah, a question from Sandra B. Uh, what size cookie scoop did you use? Yeah, so this is on our Amazon page. It's called a number 16. They say that it is a two ounce. I am assuming that that is two fluid ounces is what they're saying. It's about um, a, around a quarter of a cup. It's somewhere between a quarter and a third, so kind of like a roundy quarter cup, I would say. Um, and so, and I use this a lot because it just helps keep everything even. So even when you're making muffins, if you find a scoop that's the right size for your muffins, it just helps you portion them out. So, but that's also on our Amazon page. And I think the brand is uh, Volrath, V-O-L-L, R-A-T-H, Volrath, and they come in a variety of sizes, and I think I have two or three of them, and they're really nice, um, you know, for scooping out mashed potatoes and rice dishes and all kinds of things. I think the link to the scoops, when you get there, it's one of those Amazon sites where they list all the sizes on one page, and so you just click on which which number you're after, and they might, they might tell the ounces on there too, I'm not sure. It, it does tell the ounces, and that if you read the description, and then they give each one a number, and I don't know why they don't put what size it actually is on them, but they don't. Um, but we really like them. I use them, I use them a lot. So, and then once these come out of the oven, then I just let them cool on the cookie sheet 
for about five minutes or so and then I like to take um, yeah I have the wire racks the cooling racks and just use a spatula move them to the wire cooling rack let the top and the bottom get nice and cool and when there's no heat left then I put them like in a Tupperware container and put them in the refrigerator you don't want to leave these out at room temperature because they have no preservatives in them and they don't have sugar and sugar kind of acts like a preservative as well and so either store them in the refrigerator or put them in the freezer and um, and they'll they should last you know a month or so quite well in the freezer unless you eat them all which can happen so any other questions Tom I uh, you look for questions yeah, and I I'm think just we're gonna caught up here okay um, so back to local spicery um, when I was keep getting it, keep it back that's not when, okay there. when I was getting all the spice I'm used to holding it out in front yeah, let me tell them what what's going on with the focus is to use our Canon camera as our primary webcam for live broadcasting we have to put it on manual when we're recording videos I get to put it on automatic and, and she can move things wherever and the camera will track it but for this kind of presentation it's it's focused on her face so when she holds it forward for you guys it actually blurs out so that's what's going on new and different Okay, when I was getting the spices out for this recipe um, this afternoon, I saw my local spicy Moroccan breakfast spice. And I thought, oh my gosh, this would be so good in the cookies, you guys. So if you have this spice, because this is a blend of cinnamon, ginger, turmeric, and cloves. Mm. And so wouldn't that be good? Tom's going, mmm. Yeah, this would be really good. And this is great on oatmeal too. So, um, so anyway, I just wanted to say, if you have that, go ahead and use it. You could use um, pumpkin pie spice would also be good in this, I think, or even apple pie spice. And you could use some chopped up apple maybe for the person who doesn't want to use chocolate chips. Maybe just take a sweet apple and chop some sweet apple up and maybe put a quarter or a half a cup of chopped apple in these. And I think that would be really good. And then you wouldn't have the um, trigger from the chocolate. You wouldn't have the fat from the chocolate. And that might work really well. Tom's got another question. Okay, um, there's a question going on since we're talking about baked goods about who had a biscotti recipe. Was that uh, Jurudi family? Did no. You, no? Who had no. the biscotti uh, that video is, recently? Oh, a video on it? I, I don't know. I don't know who had a video. I had in my head that, that, um, I had in my head that Brittany had done a biscotti. No, I think maybe the, the Esselstons are doing a okay. Chibo oh. Um, I think maybe the Esselstons are doing a Chibo cooking class and they're making the cake, their the kale, kale cake, cake, and they're also, I think, making the biscottis. I'm looking in their book here to see if the, I think the biscotti recipe is in here. It is. So if you have this book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, and we have um, all of our favorite cookbooks are also on our Amazon page. They have a ginger biscotti recipe. So let me see what's in it. It's oats. It does have wheat flour. So see, I couldn't have them because I'm gluten-free. And also, you guys, if you want to make these gluten-free for anyone for the holidays, just make sure that you buy certified gluten-free rolled oats and certified gluten-free oat bran. Um, or instead of the oat bran, if you can't find that certified gluten-free, then you can use the quinoa flakes instead because those are gluten-free. Tom's got a question. Well, Belinda's uh, commenting the Esselton's Biscotti video is called Hot Shot Biscotti. So evidently that's something that they actually have up on, okay. on YouTube at this point. So we're good to Great. go with that. And then um, back to your um, treats here. Gail yes. is asking, do you flip the cookies midway through cooking? I do not. I don't. I have not found that to be necessary. And uh, here's what they look like. And let me just break one open. Hold it to the look down camera. I think it's self-focusing. Um, look at this screen here. Hold it up. Up? Because And then turn it sideways so that, yeah. That's a better... Well, I was trying to show them the inside. Oh, okay. See? Because that one self-focuses. Okay. So there you go. And they're just, they're kind of, they're uh, soft and chewy on the inside. And, but they're, you know, they have a little bit of um, texture 
on the outside. Firm from, and easy to handle on the outside and soft and well, chewy in the inside. There you go. And they'll travel. <laughs> they, I, they'll, tra they'll travel well. So, you know, either by car or plane or in your lunchbox or what have you, um, they'll, they'll really travel well as well. So there we go. So they taste sweet to me and I don't mind the bitter um, from the chocolate because I'm not used to having really sweet food. And so because of that, these taste like really, really good to me. And they go extremely well with a mug of our sugar-free hot chocolate. Um, it's really good. So any other questions? No, we are caught up. We've been on 41 minutes, so we well, should probably wrap it I up. I figured this is gonna be like a 20 minute video, you guys. So anyway, well, that's it for our um, chocolate chip raisin oatmeal cookies. I hope you guys will try them and like them. If you can, give us a thumbs up if you liked this video. You can also share this video. There is a tab underneath that says share, and you can actually share this if you're in any uh, plant-based Facebook groups. If you would share our video, that would be awesome. We would really appreciate that. It's always good to be able to reach more people with healthy recipes and subscribe. If you aren't a subscriber yet and click on that bell, that's how you get notifications whenever we go live or we put a new video up. And also go over to the blog, nutmegnotebook.com and subscribe there. And when you subscribe, you get an email immediately immediately get sent to the email that you use to subscribe and then you get a link to some exclusive recipes. Now that um, email from us oftentimes ends up in your junk folder or your spam folder. So do look there for the recipes, but there's a wonderful curry ginger butternut squash a soup recipe and salad dressing recipe. And um, I forget what all we have in there now, but anyway, it's, it's a really nice bunch of recipes. So do that, give us a thumbs up. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you, Randy, for coming and helping us moderate at the very last minute. We so appreciate that. And we wish you all happy holidays. So I'm Tammy. And I am. And, and I'm Tom. <laughs> hey, I get my two cents. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay, of now course. we gotta start over. Okay. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and stay, stay healthy, healthy one, one meal, meal at, at a time. time. Bye bye. Bye, you guys. Thanks so much for joining us.